So the INO trial, excuse me, that trial, uh, who uh, was published by HECAP uh, uh, um, in New England, uh, the trial was just in patients in first and second salvage, the salvage being treated with uh, inotuzumab. Uh, and was focusing on two endpoints. Primary endpoint was reaching remission, secondary endpoint was OS. The first endpoint was met, the secondary endpoint was not met, which was a surprise because the response rates were 80%. And everyone thought, well, if you've got 80% response rate, that has to correspond to uh, uh, and chemo was just 30% response rate that would translate in overall survival, but it didn't. Uh, so that's really a, quite a surprise that actually, despite having a very effective agent initially on a long term, or reasonably long term, it didn't show as being very beneficial. Um, so uh, um, in the field, um, we, I'm not a little bit hesitant about those results, personally, um, how to interpret that with caution. Whereas the lunatumumab trial with a much more advanced disease stage setting, because they also had patients in the third and fourth cell, which there was still an OS survival between the two drugs being used there, tested the experimental arm, the beam blinder, and the SOC arm, the chemotherapy arm. Both were balanced, all there, but it, and that is more meaningful. In a tuzumab, I would use in more elderly patient population due to the compliance C issues um, of actually following through protocol in patients with hyperleukocytosis and in patients with a huge extra medullary disease burden because. Uh, that's on a personal level, I've, uh, I've seen that, that patients under those circumstances just don't do too well with blood map. I usually prefer to use inotusumab in those patients. The VOD is the, the biggest problem. Uh, so we do initial uh, assessment uh, for the VO function. And then periodically we'll look for that, for signs. Of VOD is difficult to detect and it's difficult to treat. Uh, there are ID problems that can occur because it's chemotherapy only delivered in a smarter way. Um, and there's a heme toxicity, so, and so it would follow guidance uh, that we usually use just when we do regular chemotherapy using growth factors, do some antibiotic prophylaxis. So it's very similar to that. It's not really immunotherapy, and that's kind of it's just a smarter way of delivering chemo.